Well, good morning. Welcome to today's reflection from Christchurch. Yesterday, David started a mini sermon series on service. And although planned for some time, it fitted in very well with the overall encompassing message of service that has been so much reflected on in these last few days, the years of dedicated Christ-inspired service of our late queen. David spoke from Mark 10, verses 32 to 45, and contrasted the initially positive words of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, with their subsequent question to Jesus, which demonstrated that they hadn't understood what the greatness of our servant king was all about. Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen to him, the betrayal, pain, suffering, and death, but yet he still voluntarily went on to Jerusalem in obedience to God. He was prepared to die, to die for us. His life was a service to God and a service to and for us. And the lesson for each one of us, that we too should do what God lays on our heart, that we too Go where he calls us in total obedience, surrendering our priorities and accepting his. That we too should be prepared to die for self, die to our own self-will. Unless that seems too hard, there is the reminder that just as Christ rose again to glory, so too will we. A life of service is a choice. It was a choice our late queen made right at the start of her reign and one she didn't deviate from. She chose to serve, as she said, the people of this land and of the Commonwealth. Inter alia, in the way that she did that, she also showed many, many more people all around the world what serving meant. Above all though, as she reminded us Christmas message after Christmas message, she chose to serve God. I was looking again at some of those messages and was drawn to words from the 2012 one when she said, this is the time of year when we remember that God sent his only son to serve, not to be served. He restored love and service to the center of our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. The motto on the heraldic badge of the Prince of Wales, Prince William now, is Ich Dien. German for I serve. It's set beneath three ostrich feathers and has been around since the Battle of Cressy in 1346. Uh, the stories and myths around its adoption are many and varied, including that the three feathers represent faith, hope and charity, symbols adopted by the Medici. Now with a name like Roberts, you might guess that I'm Welsh. In fact, I still remember that growing up in my small local area, there were 23 pages of Roberts in the telephone directory, for those who remember what a telephone directory was. I don't care about the derivation of that motto, Ich Dien, but I do rejoice in the concept it illustrates. I serve. And it seems to me that this is a motto that we should all adopt. Service for others in obedience to God is the biblical principle that should govern our lives. Of course, it is not always easy to understand what form of service God wants us to follow. There's no single pattern, no single role. God may call us to serve in the way that we carry out our secular employment, or in the way we reach out to our neighbors, or care for our family. Through the Holy Spirit, he will speak to each one of us. Our role is just to switch on, listen and obey. I want to close with three short passages from the Bible. First, the words from Mark 10 that David spoke to. Verse 42. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles rule it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, 
and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Then in Philippians 2, verses 5 to 8, we can read, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And then again, at the Last Supper, we read in John 13, verse 12 onwards, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. I, like so many others, am saddened by the death of Queen Elizabeth, but find comfort as I reflect on a life with all its ups and downs, lived out in faith, a life full of that hope, which is steadfast and certain. I pray that King Charles may know God's comfort and peace, as he too follows on with the motto that he held to for, for the 64 years he was Prince of Wales. I serve. Let's pray. I want to close with the prayer that David used yesterday. Father God, thank you that your son, Jesus Christ, went to Jerusalem in obedience to your will, voluntarily giving up his freedom to die, to free me from slavery to sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon me now in a new and living way, that I might also follow you in obedience that I might die to self and one day rise to glory with you. Help me understand how in my life facing my challenges, servanthood leads to true greatness for the sake of your son, my savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And even though it's been selected recently, the song I've chosen for today has to be The Servant King by Graham Kendrick. Have a great week. God bless.